Hey there, welcome to Say It Right, an emergency program that will cure your linguistic ailments. Do you feel guilty that your English is way too simple? Are you sick and tired of always searching for some help while learning English? Then you've come to the right place. I am Anne Marie, your language nurse, and I'm here to help you learn English. So, on today's program, we will find out the following. What has more dramatic effect on you? Incidents or accidents? How do they affect you? How not to lose your mind when reading someone's mind? What do you have on your mind when you're in a good frame of mind? Where the phrase wannabe came from? What does Madonna have to do with it? We'll clear everything up in just a few seconds. Okay, are you ready? Then let's take a pill of knowledge. Do you want to relieve the pain caused by all those confusing English words? You don't know how to eliminate vocabulary microbes? Then let's start our emergency disinfection of your vocal cords right now. Our words for today are accident and incident. Let's examine them. Our first word is accident. This is something that happens unexpectedly and usually causes some damage to a person or property. You can often hear it when talking about car, train, or plane crashes. For example, my brother had a car accident, crashed his car, and now he has to take the bus. Got it? Good. As for the next word, incident. An incident is an event or unpleasant occurrence, misunderstanding, or conflict. Like in the example, uh-huh, the incident between John and George made me so sad. How silly boys are when they fight. Understood it? Is everything clear? Okay, great. Now for our next set of words, effect and effect. These are often confused, even by native English speakers. So, thus, prick up your ears and try to remember the word affect is used as a verb. For example, his speech affected me deeply. The next one is effect. Mm -hmm. Effect is normally used as a noun. Like here, do you feel the effect of my linguistic pills? Have you understood? I hope you remember them. So, now that you know it all, it is time for some vitamins. Oh my, my head is just spinning around. You know, I have an invention on my mind to create a special machine, which you just need to put on your head to remember all idioms. The phrase on one's mind means to have something in your thoughts that you keep thinking about or worrying about. Let's try. Mm -mm. Nope. For instance, I even forgot about my date because I only have this invention on my mind. To continue, I can't quite figure out how to make this invention work. I'm just losing my mind constantly thinking about it. I bet you know that to lose one's mind means to go crazy. Mm -mm, still nothing. I'm nearly losing my mind over this invention. I'm in a terrible frame of mind from all this work, and alas, still no success. I hope you guessed 
that. The phrase frame of mind means your emotional state at a particular time. Like, for instance, when you learn all these idioms, I'll be in a very good frame of mind. I'm sure that everything will work out. Let's try one more time, and I hope we will have some success. Are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. And for now, what are we gonna do? I think that's all for now. We'll take a little, take a little break. You, you just read my mind. Oh, in other words, you knew exactly what I was thinking. You always know what I'm thinking in advance. And I tell you, I guess you read my mind. Okay, whew, that's, that's enough. Let's take a break because it's about time for a little relaxation. Whew. Take your seat, relax, and listen only to my voice. Today, we will find out something interesting about an unusual word, wannabe. It derives from the combination want to be or wannabe. Wannabe is a person who emulates someone, very often celebrities. Mm hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Not quite for me. This word originates back to the 1980s when the singer Madonna was extremely popular. Yeah, uh, I think masks aren't for me. During that time, it was common to see young women dressed in the style of Madonna. They were called Madonna wannabes after a journalist, John Scow, who, in May 1985, created a story, Madonna Rocks the Land, in Time magazine, where he used this word for the first time. Oh, terrible. Never. <laughs> it's not for me. From that time on, the term wannabe began to be used referring to any man or woman who imitated celebrities. Eh, I'm not quite sure. I think it's a little too old fashioned. But please be cautious when using it because nowadays it has a negative connotation and it is not a very polite way to speak about someone. What a strange world we live in, but interesting at the same time. Let's try one more. Aha. Uh -huh. I think this one fits me perfectly. Great work. Our session is coming to an end, and I can see the life coming back into your language. Let's make an express checkup of your linguistic health. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Ah. I see you now know how to differentiate such words as incident and accident, as well as effect and effect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. And all the vitamins worked out. And from now on, you will never forget the idioms on one's mind, to lose one's mind, frame of mind, and to read one's mind. Super. And the last. Uh-huh, you will never have to be a wannabe English speaker because you have all the knowledge to be the real thing. Excellent. I'm so impressed. Work hard and you'll be an expert in no time. This was Anne Marie, your personal language nurse, and you watched Say It Right. May your English be clean and healthy. After a journalist, John Scow, who Is that bullish up good? Snooze. I'm not going to go to the house. I'm 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 going to go to the house.